As you can see from one of the photos up there, Johanna has been a longtime member of our church and has trusted Jesus as her Lord and Savior at a very young age. Her favorite Bible verse is Psalms 46.5. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. When she grows up, she wants to be an elementary school teacher. Congrats, Johanna. Okay, next we have Jordan Lee Greer. We like to call Jordan. Jordan knows. It's a little inside joke. She is the daughter of Kelly and Billy Greer, and she graduates next Saturday. Jordan has been such a blessing in our youth group. She is always the first one to greet any new teenagers that visit the youth, and it has been such a privilege having her in our youth group the past seven years. When she grows up, she wants to be either a nurse or a physical therapist. Her favorite Bible verses is first Joshua 1, 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and create courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope in a future. Congrats, Jordan. Okay, next we have Josie Aurelia. Warren staff, did I say that right, Josie? Flo, oh, okay. She is, can y'all see all these cute pictures? Okay, look at her one, wasn't that cute? Can you do that again? No, okay. She is the daughter of Chad and Mia Warren staff, and she graduated yesterday from Siegel High School. Since the moment we met her, she's been so polite, as you can see, and respectful, and we have enjoyed having her in Sunday school. When she grows up, she wants to be either a nurse or a neurologist. Her favorite Bible verse is Luke 137, for no word from God will ever fail. Congrats, Josie. <laughs> Next, we have Matthew Yang, who is from our Hamal ministry. such a blessing to our church, so we try to make sure, why, why don't we include them in our graduation ceremony? So I believe there were two of them, but one was out of town today, so we are going to recognize Matthew Yang. He, uh, let's see, graduated from Stewart's Creek High School on Friday evening, and when he grows up, he wants to be a mechanical engineer. Matthew's favorite Bible verse is Matthew 6, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He is the son of Ka, Ka Yang and C. Floor. Congrats, Matthew. And finally, drum roll, please, no, we have Noah Allen Petty. Whom we like to call Petty. He is the son of Michael and Karen Petty, and he graduated yesterday from Siegel High School. Noah has been such a blessing in our youth group. We have watched this boy become a God-fearing man in the seven years we have had him in our group. He treats us with utmost respect and has never complained about any task we have laid in his life. When he grows up, he wants to be a mechanic. Petty's favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Congrats, Noah. Okay, now I turn the mic over to, his, for, to Petty for his testimony. The floor is all yours.
kill them. So, uh, my name is Noah Penny, as you guys already know. And you get to see my wonderful pictures. <laughs> uh, I was MC Hammer, if you couldn't tell from the picture earlier, and how many months ago. But, uh, so, I started coming to this church in 2007, when I was six, and uh, it was awesome. I remember being in RAs with, uh, I think y'all remember uh, Bo, yes. Bo Wooder, and uh, we just had, had the best time ever, you know. Absolutely loved coming to church, it's my favorite. And uh, I remember doing just <laughs> really fun stuff in there with him, and from the camping trips, and the Pinewood Derbies, and him teaching me how to throw a football and tackle my brother with a football. <laughs> and uh, we just, we always had the best time in there. And uh, I always felt home when I was at Baltimore Baptist. And, uh, you know, at that point, I definitely had the best relationship that I ever had with God. I remember uh, asking Jesus into my heart like 30 times in one day just to make sure that we were always good and I was, you know, he was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, after a little bit, we ended up stopping coming to Walter Hill, and I ended up uh, going to a bigger church, which was not my thing. Uh, I just didn't feel, it wasn't as like, it didn't feel as much of a family as it did here. And like, I remember, you know, walking into Sunday school, and the, I didn't just feel that connection with the pastor or anything. It, just, it was not my thing. And so throughout middle school, my uh, my attitude towards Christ changed a little bit since I wasn't I didn't I didn't enjoy going to church because I, I didn't like it as much then and uh, my attitude towards Christ was just more of like well I can do it later you know? um, it was not it was not the best and um, eventually my mom ended up saying that we we're going to come back to Walter Hill and that I had to go to youth group which I was not excited about because I had to being a real people I didn't know. So I told her that I was only going to go if I could bring my friend Casey here, which I don't know why I act like it was a choice. Mom said we were going, we were going. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, you know, so I brought, I brought my friends, we had at least one person to talk to. And I, and I my first day, Michael was there, and uh, it, was, it was, everyone was so nice. And, you know, I slowly started, you know, building a relationship with everyone here, and uh, after I got over myself of not wanting to talk to anybody, I, uh, and I actually started listening on Wednesday nights when I would come here, um, I just got tired of feeling bad when, you know, when I left, because you know, when you don't go to church for a while and you come back, you realize how much your attitude changed. And how much more you can be doing, and you know the things that you are doing maybe aren't the best. And um, so I started getting back, and I remember uh, I started to enjoy youth group. I started enjoying coming to church more, and I started becoming a lot more invested, you know, in this church and my relationship with Christ. And I remember Michael said something. Michael said something uh, one time that has always stuck with me, and uh, it was, you know, if it's not for God, then why even? And he said that, and I just couldn't get out of my head. You know, going to a high school, it is tough for everything you need to do to be for God and glorify God. It's really tough. You know, from the music you listen to, from uh, the choice of words you use to, you know, the people you hang around to what you're doing. Um, that was the toughest part. But, you know, I, I heard that one day, and I just could not get it out of my head. It was not working. So and I, I knew that uh, something, you know, something had to change. You know, and, uh, once I started reading the Bible more and being more more familiar with the Bible and, you know, I was able to, you know, quote some things and it was just in my head every day because I was, I was looking at the Bible more, you know, more than just on Wednesdays and just on Sundays. Um, once you start looking, looking at it every day or every other day because, you know, I forget. Um, you know, in the middle of junior year, that's usually that's kind of when I had that epiphany, and then 
I got to, or to senior year, and I was like, you know, every single day, I'm gonna be a practice athlete. Every single day. You know, my thought process was like, if my mom was next to me the whole entire time when I was in high school, would she be okay with what I'm doing? And that was my thought process every single day. And the first like two months, it was really hard, and I gave up a couple times and you know, went back and forth, but. The more persistent I was and the more invested I got in the Bible and just church, it you know, just became easier and easier and easier. Amen. And um, my goal is just uh, to be a Christ-like example every single day in everything that I'm doing. Amen. And, uh, the first thing I started with was the music I listened to because uh, the car I had before, if you know me, then you know that I listen to my music very loud in my vehicle. And uh, I like speakers a lot, so I always have my music playing. But, you know, everyone can hear what I'm listening to. And that was the first thing that really hit me, was, you know, if someone looks at me, you know, they see me driving down the road, what impression am I going to leave on them? Is it going to be a Christ-like, you know, impression? Or is it going to be some dumb rap song going down the road? You know, and I had a decision to make, and I had my two playlists. I had my God playlist, and I had my everything else playlist. And um, some, some I have good weeks, and I've had bad weeks of listening to the right stuff. But you know, one thing I've learned is that you just have to be persistent, and and in being in the in the Word, and just trying to live it every single day, and every little week. And that is uh, what I've been trying to do. And being here, you know, every Wednesday, I love being here every Wednesday. You know, I had to teach a class today. Um, I was really nervous. It's like 30 people in there. It was really scary. And um, I talked for like almost the whole time. It was great. I only had to use Matt for like the last like five minutes. So it worked out great. <laughs> and, uh, that kind of prepped me to talk here, so I'm good now. But, um, you know, I love this church. I love going to this church. You all are all just like a big family. And uh, thank you all, every single one of you all, for helping me, you know, through my high school and through my through my walk with Christ. And I hope that I can be a Christ-like example every single day. Amen. That's my plan, so. Thank you. Woo! kids. And one of the things about God is that he loves little kids. 
You know, I see a picture of Jesus holding a child, and I see the Creator who says, I love the children. In fact, one time Jesus said that they have angels that are always beholding, beholding the face of the Father. And so God has special, scripturally, angels that are des des designated to watch over the kids. Amen. So God is a partner with you. And when Jesus holds the kids, he's saying, you're where my heart is. And that's, that's precious. Amen. This morning, um, we've got Anthony and Hillary. And um, you're bringing to the Lord Isaac Anthony Reed. Isaac. Oh, I love it. And we have a Bible to give to the, to the Father and a certificate to, to you guys. Certificate is a chance to just say on this day we dedicated little Anthony, uh, Isaac Anthony. And also the Bible is just a reminder. It's the Word of God that is your instruction manual. And then we have Wyatt Cole Warnstaff. Wyatt, quit acting like your daddy and start <laughs> acting like your mom. Yeah. And Chad, we have for you God's Word as a reminder of the head of the home that you're here to be sure that your home is established on scriptural principles Amen. as you are in both families. And then Mia, the certificate, but the reminder, your heart is what is there to be close to God so that then you can now help lead your uh, precious little little Wyatt in the right way. You know, one of the things the Bible is careful to say is you need to teach your children diligently. It's tough being a parent. There's a lot of things you got to do. But one of the things at the top of your list is to be diligent to know God's Word and to teach God's Word. Amen. And it says talk about it when you're sitting in the house. You know, sometimes it's hard to do the positive because you're doing the negative so much. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Come back here. But you need to think about being positive. Love God. You know, when you're walking, by the way, when you lie down. In fact, probably the most important thing that you need to do as a parent is to love God. Because when you love God out of your heart, you can pass that love on. And it's, it's not going to be easy, but the Lord has said, I'm with you always. And you know the thing about it? God knows what it's like to raise unruly kids. He's been working with you guys for a long time. And he's going to help you as you raise your kids. I love the scripture, that, it, and we'll have a prayer after this. It just simply says, these words that I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. Keep it close to your heart, because there's no greater strength than the Lord in his word. Close to your heart. And with that in mind, yes, he won't mama. That's amazing. All right. Folks, would you join me in praying now with these families and the other families that are here as we dedicate these precious ones to the Lord? Father, you understand the patience and the perseverance and the strength that is required to raise little ones, to be there for them in their good days and their bad days. To help them focus on the path in front of them that they need to walk. And Lord, I just pray for these parents that have taken the time and the energy and the fortitude to stand before this church body today. And to stand in your presence. Amen. And say, Lord, please take my kids. Help me raise them to have a heart for you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I think, Chad, you're going to sing for us right now. Well, we know who Wyatt takes after. Anthony, God bless you, my friend. Love you, buddy. Yes, sir. All right. You're going to sing with him? I'm going to try. Okay. Let it fly. <laughs> First of all, uh, I want to thank the pastor and uh, her. I know they did baby dedication last week, so we could have some family in. And, uh, the youth for letting us insert this here. And uh, I'm going to be singing to Wyatt. Um, I'm going to try at least. And uh, this song goes far past that. It's, it's to every one of you youth. It's to uh, seniors that just graduated. And Josie and uh, my stepdaughters here, Bailey and Taylor. Did you all want to come up here? I can try to hold you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
But uh, bear with me with this song. This is way out of my range, but I think it's a good song, and I wanted to sing it. He didn't care, so I'm going to try it. It's only for a moment you were mine to hold The plans that have been plans for you will all too soon unfold So many different prayers I'll pray for all that you might do But most of all I want to know you're walking in the truth And if I in the last four weeks, and I uh, just need to remember her. 
Uh, and uh, there's, there's others, Shirley Leonard, and others that you can have on your mind that we need to be praying for. And let's let's do that. Our deacon of the week this morning is uh, is Christian. Is the deacon of the week? Hey man, good to have you on the deacon board, bro. Yeah, that's good. How many of you have things on your heart that you would say? Let's start. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you get going, I'm gonna reverse it. How many of you say you got things you're grateful for today? Amen. 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 All right. Now to what? How many of you say there's things on my heart that God knows about that I just need to lift my hand and say, Lord, please remember me, my friends, my family. Amen. Isn't it great to have people that are coming up in the footsteps of Jesus? Amen. Our young people and for Kenzie and Michael and, and Matt and Kelly Amen. and all that. Christian leaders in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you. Uh, that you've given this day to us to celebrate you. Amen. And I ask that you forgive us of our sins, that we can be a better person and influence more people to follow you. Amen. Please bless this offering as people put money towards this church to increase the amount of people that you want uh, to learn about you. Amen. And please uh, touch these people's hearts and uh, heal the people that need healing and are suffering. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Let them be mad about it. I'll take care of that part. Because I'm the crazy guy that they're going to have fun with anyway. So don't worry about it. Make them be here. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it. They're actually tallying that today. How many times am I going to say that? Hopefully just one. Let's pray and we'll get going. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Thank you for loving Amen. everyone. Thank you for dying for us. Amen. Lord, without you, we are nothing. But through you, we can be everything. Amen. We can conquer everything. Lord, I ask that everybody's heart is open today, is excited to hear what you have for them. Amen. Lead us, guide us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, so we're going interactive. I'm always a little, little tense in here because I'm used to interacting. What was today about in Sunday school? Fear. What? Fear. Fear. There you go. Come on, be loud, be proud. Let's just do it. All right, so fear, absolutely. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. Who's nerd? Who doesn't want to be called on? Oh, y'all are smart. <laughs> Y'all been to youth class parents before? I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Thought I was lying to you today. Yeah. All right, just simply, simply. Everybody know Derek Wilkerson? Yeah. This is Derek Wilkerson. Yeah. He's a good man. He's a great man. If you ever want somebody to pump you up, this is the guy. I call him Mr. Ten because he is physically flawless because he works out all the time. <laughs> now, what are you doing? <laughs> I've been waiting to do that a long time, y'all. <laughs> Tell me, Derek, what are you afraid of? Him saying get away, I never knew you. Oh, oh, God. You just said me, brother. That's number one. You've been, you've been practicing, haven't you? I should have said it. All right, let's go over here. Let's go over here. That is number one. Could you imagine that? You do all these things for God. You do everything. You never truly fully accept it. And then, bam, he says, I don't know you. <sighs> Young man. What are you scared of? Cancer and heart trouble. Amen. Amen to that. But you know what's amazing? God got you. Amen. Amen. Fear. Fear is something that is amazing that we actually let get to us. Y'all know what I'm scared of? The dark. <laughs> My parents were crazy enough to let me watch horror films. The stuff today is a little more true to the Bible, so it freaks me out even more. So I avoid it as much as possible unless Kinsey makes me watch it. She likes the zombie stuff. We already are there with the cell phones looking down, so it kind of freaks me out even more. But back in my day was Freddy Krueger. Jason. That stuff is always you shut the lights off and somebody's going to come out of nowhere and get you. So I still have the power to jump from the light switch to my bed. I'm still there. It hurts sometimes, but it's scary. It is absolutely freaky. <sighs> Sorry. I don't, I don't know. Snakes. Come on, man. Snakes. The only good snake is a dead snake. I'm sorry, I can't stand snakes. I had one in my shed one time. And I, of course, back then I had so much stuff piled in it, you couldn't even get back there. But what I needed was way in the back. So I had to jump over on doing this number. And he's just looking at me when I got there. And I just screamed, it's like a girl, I'm not gonna do it, because I can, whatever. I screamed and I just took off running. And this is before Matt was my neighbor. And I probably wouldn't have called him anybody because he would have just filmed me laughing, watching me cry and scream like a little kid. So I called him but I said, Bobby, you've got to come get this thing. I think it's absolutely a rattlesnake. And he's like, I'm on my way. I don't know where he was, in, but he was there in less than five minutes, better than Domino's. He got there, and he was mad at me because there's stuff everywhere. We're just throwing stuff out, trying to get the snake out. He finally gets it out and looks at it, and he's like, come on, man. It's just a garter snake. Let it go. I'm like, no, kill the thing. But he didn't. He let it go. <laughs> just Sorry, that's just one of the snakes freak me out. Why do we have to have them? I'm going to ask God when I get there. What was the point? Just to freak us out? Scare us? Spiders. Who likes spiders in here? One. Two. Three. 
You know what I like to do? Just knock them out. That's right. Home run, baby. I don't, I mean, they're just, they're just freaky. You guys know that people fear peaches? There he is, Maury Povich, one day watching this thing, because I thought it was hilarious. Because I thought it was fake. This guy's scared of peaches. So no, this is this game. No, no, it's just a peach. They flashed the peach up on the screen like this thing right here, and dude took off running like a shotgun. Boom, gone. not being accepted. Yeah, that's not here. Because we're a church. That should be number one, never, ever let happen here. No matter who you are in my youth room, you're going to come in, you're going to have fun. Am I going to be mean to you? Possibly at one point. But it's because I love you, and I tell you that straight out. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, but you are mine. You're in here now. I'm going to train you. I'm going to move you forward. I'm going to push you to be the most extreme person you can for God. So you actually do what you're supposed to be doing on this earth while you're here. You all with me this morning? Amen. 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 I got three or two. Acceptance in a church is absolutely, absolutely one of the hardest things to do because we're all different people. We're from all different walks of life. We have different childhoods. We came up different, different country, different places. Different stages in our country. Different stages. Actually, we do a different country. Let's talk about Ricky. <laughs> Alright, y'all didn't get that number. Right. Sorry. A little too inside. Rejection. Or we have a fear of being rejected. Should we really have a fear of rejection? How many times was Christ rejected for what he did? Everywhere he went. Pharisees were on him the whole time. People didn't want to believe him. It's ridiculous. But we have a fear of that. Failure. We have a fear of failure. I do. I don't want to fail up here. I want to, I want to make sure that God is using me to get to you. Because it's not about me right now. It's about what you're hearing. So your heart has changed to go do what God is calling you to do. Amen. To step up and move. I know I try to give you all that motivation every year. I'll get you one time a year, 45 minutes. I got a lot to put in there. You don't come join me if you want. Ooh, here's one. Fear your parents. Who's scared of your parents over here? If their hand is not raised, you need to get to work. That is healthy to be scared of your parents. I was scared of my parents until last year. <laughs> it doesn't change. I just want to say that. Those people are scared to go out and do their ministry. They have that fear. If God is leading you to do something, why are you fearing that point? Amen. I don't get it. Derek, how many times did I say that fear is in the Bible? I said it as I was walking out, man. Come on. No, it was 437 times. I said it fast. Hopefully you wouldn't hear me. I love that guy. 437 different times it's used in the Bible. We're going to have a common phrase today, or a common reason we're going to use fear. And if you are the first one to do it, or figure out what it is, I'll say it that way, I'm proud of you. And I want you to yell it out, okay? So you can either turn with me, or you can just listen. For those that know me and youth, they're going to just listen because they want to be the first one to say it. Just say it. All right, so Judges 6.10. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God, you shall not fear the gods, little g, of the Amorites, who are Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Job 1 8. And <clears throat> excuse me, and the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil. Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. 3 7 Proverbs. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Anybody got it yet? All right, we'll go on. Acts 10 35. But in, in every nation, 
Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. What is the common fear? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. That is the good fear. That's what you should do. You don't fear me. Why don't you fear me? You fear a God that can create and decimate in one second. That's who you fear. We don't look at God as a fear anymore. We look at God as something that's going to do what we need when we need it. Fear is something that can create and decimate. I love that. Fear it. But yet he has the love and genuineness to say, come to me whenever you need me. Be with me. Fear me. Because I have the power. Amen. Power is there. As far as theologically I'm going to go with that. We go a whole lot further. Fear as a child, you look at different things. Those fears I was talking about earlier, those are the fears that I had growing up as a child. Looking at the things through my childly eyes. When I first learned to love the Lord, I learned to do it looking at myself. What do I need to change? What am I going to have to do to be a better Christian? I hear that from them all the time. Well, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I want to be better at this. I want, I want, I want. There's something that you should not want about yourself. It is what you can do for other people. Because if you're doing that, all these things you're focusing on here are going to stop. You're going to stop worrying about this thing. You're going to stop having a fear about this, a fear about that, a fear about whatever. Because that is what my fear now is, am I doing enough in my daily walk? Amen. As Petty was saying, some days are good, some days are bad. But are you doing that? I ask these questions to myself all the time. Have I done enough for his kingdom today? It's a fear I have. Have I spread some good seed today? I'm worried about that. Amen. Every interaction you have, you have a chance to spread that seed. And that's all you have to do. So there's really nothing on you but to do that. So where is the fear? In opening yourself up to people. Did you look at somebody today that you walked by 50,000 times in a day did you say hi to him? Somebody entered your holy house of God. Did you acknowledge them today? Or are you mad at them for some earthly reason that you would say, oh, I'm going to avoid them today? Come well, on. That's not why we're here. And that is where I'm going with this, is that as you grow in knowledge, you realize that your day-to-day -day job is just to spread the word of God. Amen. That's it. So we technically have no fear we are moving forward, and what are we doing for God? Not where are we going for our prestige, our money. It doesn't matter, because God's going to take care of all that. Amen. Does he not love the birds more than he loves us? See if you're paying attention. Anybody catch that one? You catch that one? Flip it. That's right. I see if you're awake. Derek's awake. He's back there chuckling. <laughs> Yes, wake up. Look. He loves us more than he loves them. But he still gives them everything they need, right? Amen. It's always there. Why do we not do the same for us? Why do we worry about that? Why is that part of our thinking when we go to fear? Fear that we are not going to have enough. I've been through that. I've lived it. Worry about how we're going to pay our bills. But was it not there every time we needed it? Why? Because we are focused on doing God's work. Instead of focusing on what we're going to do to make this happen. Amen. We knew as long as we were working with God and we we're doing what he is calling us, we have no worries. Amen. We have no fear. We're doing exactly what he has called us to do. Do you guys know one of the best ways to spread a little bit of seed? I've put it to work. Ashton, tell me what it is. Yeah, she was zoned out. That's why I called on her. She was staring, looking like she was in. But she didn't have nothing going on. Yeah. Nothing here. Does anybody, can anybody tell me the best way to spread a little C? A little GC. Armando. What you got? 
So y'all are like Noah Petty and, <laughs> and Christian over there just gabbing all night. <laughs> See, now I know where you get it from. You're good. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, those guys are just like you right now. This is like twinsies right now. <laughs> Everybody's afraid you're going to call them. Absolutely. That's how you get people to listen and focus or even act like they're focusing because they're going to call me. Okay. Jesus. That's Christian's favorite answer to anything I ask. Jesus. <laughs> no, I asked what time it was. Jesus. <laughs> it loves to do that. Man. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it. But, um, I forgot where I was. I was like, oh, yeah, there we go. Spread some seed. This is normal me in there. I forget where I'm going and then I'm coming in. Lord will hit me back. Oh, are you back with me? What you got? Yes. Make someone smile. This is why I am the way I am. Is because I want to see you smile today. If I don't make you smile, I've failed. Sometimes it takes a little more work. Jason, he's he acts like he doesn't smile, but you can see it right here. Like right now, look at that. That's his wrestler face. <laughs> I'm talking to him. Oh, done. No, I still got that picture, bro. Don't make me bust it out. Won't take long. <laughs> Love it, dude. Love it. Don't fear it. Embrace it. Smile. Um, one of the things growing in Christ. Oh, that's awesome. Sorry, I just realized I'm off lately. Um, growing in Christ, you always worry about going out and spreading the word. Because of knowledge, basically. A lot of these kids are, well, I'm scared to do it because I don't know enough. You know, honestly, I've learned that people will find God faster when they see you living because today, most of you guys in here, your parents forced you to go, and it was like this bad thing, and it was terrible. So I know a lot of these kids are forced to be here, so I want to make them laugh and have fun. <clears throat> but I also am very serious when it comes to God. Very serious. I don't play around there. But if I know I have connected with them or anybody throughout, if I can make you smile. Sometimes you're laughing at me because it's a bad joke. Amen, Glenda. <laughs> Amen. But it's okay. Because I've taken you away from that thought, whatever is bothering you, to just simply smile. Relax. Joyful. Have joy. Why is it so hard for us to have joy? I don't know. I worry a lot that... Today, who's saved, who's lost? See, I'm coming full circle. Cut off. Random. I worry about those that are lost. Amen. Those people you pass. Do you look at them as Jesus is looking at them, asking, do they know him? Have they even heard of him? They, anything. Do you care enough to look at those people through the eyes of Christ? To say, do they love him? Because ultimately, as I get older, the fears that I have are more of, are they going to hear what Derek said? Depart from me, because I never knew you. Those people that I could have spread some seed in, those people that you could have touched every day. I ask these kids, how many people do you see on a daily basis and you never say anything? Or do they even know that you love Christ? That's a travesty. Those are the fears that I have. Of these kids not spreading that word, that me not spreading the word, not necessarily that you have to go out and prophetically say everything perfect because you're not. Just to live Christ in front of them. Amen. Changes everybody. Pray that all these people that all the college kids now are truly ready to go do that. That is our job. Betty's going to be great. Josie, you're going to be great. Amen. Josie's actually one of my favorites. She doesn't show all the time. She don't tell me about it. I love these kids, and I love what God has done to me. I love that God has taken somebody who cannot stand 
to speak in front of people that you absolutely enjoy. Because that's me. The fear of talking in front of people is hard. It's truly hard. But through Christ leading me, I enjoy it. I look forward to it. I was pumped, man. I was ready to do this, ready to make Ricky laugh over there. <laughs> See, boom, done. <clears throat> All right, we can go home. You guys ready? All right. All right, we're going to open this invitation time because we've had a lot of church today. We've had a lot of God. And I just ask that you guys praise these kids today because that's who it's all about. It's about them. <coughs> if you are the Lord, we're going to have Brother Shelby up front. If you have anything you need to pray about, anything at all, fears that you want to get rid of today, that you want to give to Christ, you come up here and pray on this altar. We got a couple of deacons out here that will come and pray with you. Just come on forward. Um, we got an amazing song. I love this song. I'll let you take it, I think because of the things that we go through sometimes in life, we, we start to guard ourselves. And we really don't want to drop that guard. And, uh, we come to a place like this, we, we hear about fear and, and how sometimes it can control us and it can limit us into who we should be in Christ. And that's what this song is talking about. It says, are you hurting and broken within? Are you overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? And Jesus is calling he said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is the hope that we have and the promise that we have given to us by Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to ask you if you would, let's stand please together. And let this just be a time where you say, Lord, if there's anything in my life that does not reflect you, if there's anything in my life where I'm allowing fear to reign, Lord, I pray that you bring that to my heart, bring that to my mind, to my attention. And then I would just challenge you, church, to lay it down at the feet of the cross, to give it to the Lord. Maybe there's people in your life that you're, you're worried and you're fearful for their future and the direction that they're headed. Maybe you should come to the altar this morning and kneel down and lay them before the Lord and just say, Father, I'm giving this to you and I'm trusting in you to work in their life. Maybe you need him to work in your life this morning. So respond as the Spirit leads. I'm hurt. 